Welcome to this run through of Elicard's new automation tool. This tool can be used to automate the scheduling of cards for recurring events such as birthdays and work anniversaries. The first step to creating an automation is to select to create a new automation. And now to name it. For this demo, I will be creating birthday cards. Once I save, I need to select whether or not these will be group signed cards, which they will be for this demo. And now I can select designs that uh, the automation can use. I'll just go ahead and select the top 10 designs. You can select up to 100. And uh, you, can, you can deselect something if you have to, or you can clear your selection and start over again. That's not an issue. So once I click done, you'll see the 10 designs that I have selected. And in regards to how these designs will be allocated, it will be in order. So the first recipient will get this design, the second recipient will get this design, the tenth recipient will get this design, and then it will cycle back so that the eleventh recipient will get this design, the twelfth recipient will get this design, and so on. Next step is to actually customize the cards. So I'm going to add another page, and I'm going to write a message here saying first name happy birthday from all of us. So as you might have noticed, I have created this variable called first name. This is using a technology of ours called parameter injection. It's very similar to mail merge, where basically by using curly braces, you can create a, any variable you'd like. It can be a name, it can be a number, it could be an entire message. And later on, when once you tell us, once you give us recipient the recipients you wish to send these cards to, you'll include the information you want us to replace this variable with. You could have multiple variables per a card, and you can use the ver same variable multiple times. So as you'll see, if I toggle between the designs, the same message will show up in each design. This will always be the case unless there is a design that has what we call template text on the front. This is text that is native to the design that is editable by the customer. So I could write something like first name here as well. And if I were to select a different design, you'll see that that does not carry over. And again, it's because this text is specific to this design, and so it will only show in this design. Now that I'm done customizing my card, I'm going to click Save and go to the next step. Uh, which is customizing the envelope and theme. So as you'll see, I've already set up my logo in the custom branding of my org. So that's already set. But now I'm going to say, give a um, tell tell Elicard who the cards are coming from. And as you'll see, the name of the recipient is by default what will be on the front of the envelope. Uh, now I can select a background. I can add confetti, I can adjust the stamp um, either by selecting one of our default options or uploading your own. I can change the envelope colors if I'd like to. I can change the envelope font, I can add music, the logo is already set. And so I'll leave it like this and go to the next step, which is the group signing step. So in regards to inviting people to sign your cards, we have three options. The first option is to invite everyone of your recipients to sign every card but their own. So if you have a hundred recipients, when it's when someone's birth when it's someone's birthday is coming up, 99 of them will be invited to sign the card except the one whose birthday is coming up, and so on and so forth. So you could select this option. Our next option is to set permanent contributors. Here, you can add people who you wish to invite to sign each and every card, no matter what. So this could be an admin, a manager, um, anyone. And basically, every card, every card that gets sent, they'll be invited to sign. This option is also very popular if you just want to invite one person to sign the card, like the admin, and then they can forward that invite to everyone else who uh, they believe should be signing that card. You can also in, you can also do them do these two options in tandem. Uh, you can invite everyone to sign every card 
and add someone else outside of the recipient list to, to sign the card. So maybe only the employees would be added as recipients, but you also want to invite a manager to sign each card regardless. Uh, as you might have recall, I mentioned there were three options. The third option is to invite specific people for each card, which is done in the next step. So what I will do is I will go ahead and deselect both of these. Actually, I'll add one person, myself, to uh, as a permanent contributor. And you'll see what that looks like in the next step. Uh, but before I get to the next step, I have group signing options. This is where I can write a message for everyone uh, that they'll see when they receive an invite to sign the card and when they click it. Um, this is totally editable. And as you can see, we also use our parameter injection here as well. We offer private signing so that only the card creator and the recipient can see everything added to the card. Otherwise, uh, signers can only see what they've added. You can prevent others from adding gift cards and you can hide gift card totals. So I'm gonna click save and go to the next step. And here is where I add recipients. So you can add recipients one at a time you can import them from a spreadsheet or you can import them from your Ella card contacts. contacts. First, I'll add one at a time, one recipient, just so that you can see what that looks like. So if I click add recipient, I'm just going to insert a name, John Doe, and uh, sorry, a first name. And this is that variable that I had created called first name. Now I'm gonna add their uh, full name here. And, oh, sorry, and as you'll see, the envelope has, has updated with their name. And if I click preview as recipient, I can actually see what the entire card will look like. So I can see this. And as you can see, their name has been, the variable has re been replaced with their name. Uh, next, you give us the email or phone number you would like for it to be sent to. And tell us, let us know the send date. So in this case, their birthday the time you would like us for us to send the card to them, and what time zone they're in. So by def it'll default to your local time zone, but if you have employees across the world, you can make sure that they all receive it at the same time in their local time zone. You can also delegate ownership of the card. So let's say that you are an admin or an HR and you wanna create the cards, but then you want someone else to manage them. This is where you could basically you could give us the email of the person you wish to take ownership of the card once you've created it and they will be the ones that will have full control of the card once it's been created um, as I as you can see below here under group signing contributors uh, I had added myself as a permanent contributor which is why it's showing up right here and now I can add specific people uh, who I believe should be signing the card and you can add as many as you like and then when you click done just click add and as you can see, now I've, uh, this person has been added as a recipient. This was one at a time. I'll go ahead and show what it's like to upload a spreadsheet. So if I click import from spreadsheet, uh, first open the import options. And this is where you tell us whether or not you wanna include certain information in your upload. First is whether or not you wanna give us uh, a list of contributors to specifically invite for each person. So this is only if you wanna tell us specific people to invite to sign uh, each card. Uh, the owners column, this is whether or not, this is if you want to delegate ownership of the card, uh, as I just mentioned. The send time, so as you, as I mentioned, you can change the send time uh, for each person so they get it at different times. Otherwise, you can set a default send time right here that it'll be sent to every person and then the time zone. So again, you can add the different time zones for the different people so they all receive it at the same time in their local time zone. Finally, now I'm gonna go ahead and not select any of these and I'll just select example template. Here you can see an example of the spreadsheet that we expect. There are four columns, recipient, which is the email or phone number of the recipient, send date, uh, which is the date at which you wish, wish us to send it. You do not need to include the year. Uh, first name, which is the variable I created and then the full name. So I can click download template uh, open up the template, fill it out, and once I'm done with that, I can click Upload, and 
I will upload the information. And once the import is finished, you can see your new full list of recipients. And you can click into any one to see the information. You can make edits if you need to. And we also have a view, a calendar view, where you can see when each person's birthday is uh, from in the calendar, just uh, to help you see what's coming up. And after you've added your recipients, you, we have delivery options, which is where you can customize the email subject line. So I'm gonna change this to happy birthday. And then again, I'm going to include a parameter injection to include their first name. And so this will show up on their email as their email subject. Um, you can also select whether or not you want to allow the recipient to respond to their card. If you do, uh, their response will be sent to the card sender and anyone who signed the card. Okay, so finally is the orders and payment step. The first step is to tell us how far in advance each card will be created. So as opposed to our prior batch order tool, which created all the orders at once, this uh, with the automation tool, orders will only be placed at a certain number of days in advance of each card send date. So by default, it's three, but because these are group signed cards, I want to give the contributors more time to sign the cards, so I'll put it to seven. So seven days before each card is set to be sent to the recipient, it will be created and everyone will be invited to sign the card. Also, I've checked to get a send order confirmation email um, right here, so I'll get a confirmation when that card has been created. Now, if I quickly go back to the group signing step, you may have noticed that there was a fourth step here labeled delay inviting contributors. Now, this is an old um, deprecated step that we used to have, which is that you could tell us, hey, how far in advance, uh, you know, if I'm creating a card for the future, when do, we, when do you want us to invite uh, people to sign that card? Um, this was back with the batch order tool because we used to create the orders all at once. Now that, we have, now that these cards are only created uh, at a certain number of days in advance of when they're being sent, this tool is no longer necessary. But as you can see, the, date, the number of days before a card is scheduled to send that contributors will be invited is the same as whatever number you place here. So that's just us showing you that, hey, these people will be invited to sign the card right when the card is created. Okay, finally is the payment step. This is where you can see the projected annual cost of your card. Um, if you have a subscription, it should be covered and we'll show you that. Uh, you can also select a subscription or you can prepay for discounted credit to cover the cost. And then finally, you can select whether or not you would, you would wish for us to automatically charge a save payment method should you run out of credit, or like in a lot of cases, if people add gift cards um, to these cards, instead of having to pay for all the gift cards up front, you would be charged as each order is created. And so you can select this and we'll charge your uh, primary payment method on file. If you do not select it, as the text reads, uh, if you do run out of credit or um, you know, there's a gift card, we will pause the automation, we'll let you know, and we will wait for you to make a decision on how you'd like to proceed. So that was the last step of this automation. I'm gonna go ahead and click Start Automation, and now the automation is live. So if I exit out, I can now see that this automation is here in my Automations tab. And let's say that this automation has been going on for a month. Um, you know, a few birthday cards have gone out over the next month. And uh, let's say that a few people have joined the company, if maybe a few people have left the company, maybe you wanna just change the card designs or update your messaging to keep it fresh. That's totally possible with the automation tool. You just have to come back here, open up the automation, and now you can go to any step and make adjustments as necessary. So if you would like to remove a few designs, uh, add a few others, totally fine. If you would like to change the messaging um, to keep it fresh, totally fine. Um, again, I mentioned that you might have removed some people, uh, which you can do, or maybe you wanna add, maybe somebody joined the company, you can add them. And basically, 
you can make any adjustments you want and it will only impact all future cards being sent. This automation will keep running until it's either explicitly paused or if you come under more, if you delete it. Otherwise, it'll just continue to uh, run and send out cards at the date and times you tell us um, so that you don't have to think about it every time it's someone's birthday. This is our new automation tool. We hope you enjoy it and let us know if you have any questions. Thank you.